speaking about me being so busy, I can't believe you have time to talk to me like a oh, couple of weeks before always, the rest. man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yes, personally, but I mean, yeah. aren't you the one that's supposed to be crazy busy? Well, you know, I, I am, you know, in certain things. Yeah. But, you know, and I, and I don't know if we want to talk about this anymore or not. You know, I am blessed with a group of people, the run committee. We have 27, we have 27 members of our run committee that have over 300 hard rocks under their belt cumulatively. So, you know, I, I, the, my role, I mean, and you know, as an RD, there's, there's always things to do, but it's always, it's all also nice to have just people who you trust being able to do some of those other things, Mm -hmm. you know, aid stations or communication or courses or, and so they've taken a lot of, a lot of the time uh, or a lot of, a lot of the uh, pressure off of me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm in awe of the ultra distance race organizing because all the races that I'm, I have three little races that I'm doing here in the Olympia, Washington area. And they're all, Uh, one of them is a four mile loop, 12 hour, six hour race in a city park, uh, 10 minutes from where I live. The other one is just a holiday trail run, a 10 K five minutes from where I live. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is just a, just a sky race, but it's uh, a race. It just goes 14 miles up Right. halfway yeah. and 40 miles from finish, start to finish right so yeah i basically have to manage hardly any aid stations and i literally right. can manage the entire race with my immediate family more or less mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and a couple of friends mm-hmm. and i'm i'm in seeing what you big race directors are putting on with having to have that full trust in aid station captains to manage right everything super right. remote and stuff right and, i mean i'm i it, right. it blows me away uh yeah. what, what yeah. you put 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 on well and, you know and i think and, and I, i've been reading i've been reading a little bit about utmb and and i know and I, I'm, I'm friends with craig you know with craig thornley and, and things like that it's not you know it's yeah it it looks easy but but we have great staff who make it look easy and we there's been those years you know there's been those those early years and all of us it's like yeah we're lucky we didn't kill anybody at this this year or whatever yeah, <laughs> so, yeah 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 so it's not always you know it, it's it's one of those things where you learn a lot over yeah. over time and, and and that kind of thing it's exactly right okay. yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, and luckily I have, I have, you know, Hard Rock is blessed with people in those positions that, that are good at that kind of thing. You know, they're good at keeping inventory of stuff and making good records year after year after year. And, and, you know, and I've, um, over these last couple of years, you know, I've started to document more of that because there's so much that, that is in here. And, and, you know, and mm-hmm. I, like you say, I've been, I've been doing this for so many years that a lot of it is just stuff that I've, I've mm-hmm. learned and, and, just have in my head but you know there's going to be a time where dale garland and hard rock are no longer synonymous with each other and so i'm, I'm starting to write down things a little bit more and be a little bit more cognizant of, of keeping good records so whoever sits in this chair after me um won't have to go through the learning curve that that i've had to you know that that we've we've had to go over since 1992 so we 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 need to we need to sort of start about we need to sort of pull this conversation back because me as a RD I want to talk about the weeds and about all this planning that you're yeah. doing now but we should we should pull back you've been part of Hard Rock since the first day talk a little bit about how sort of the idea came to be and how you sort of slid into this role. Right. Um, right. to to be part of the, the these early beginnings uh-huh. because you uh-huh. obviously didn't know what you were would be creating right oh no exactly Matthias exactly you know and, and people and people you know that's one of the questions that I get is like how did how do you how did you do what what hard work has become how did you you know what was your marketing plan and what was your that kind of stuff well when we set up and started hard rock in the late eighties there was no plan of you know of us being who we are and and to to kind of complement that there was no idea that ultra running would be as big and as you know as popular as it was so we've we've kind of had to grow um evolve develop you know along with the sport mm-hmm. kind of thing and mm-hmm. now again we've been we've been really lucky you know in a, in a lot of ways to to be able to be in the position that we're in um but it but it's been an evolutionary thing so 
to kind of go back to the beginning, Hard Rock was the idea of a, of a guy who who vaca basically vacationed in the San Juans, um, loved Lake City. His name was Gordon Hardman, um, had run, you know, ultra running. He, he, I mean, this was back in the 80s, so there wasn't a whole lot of choice in terms of events and things like that. But he, he, very, he was one of the very early people who who liked to run on trails and and he loved lake city and in his tri trail his trails his travels around lake city he kind of came upon the idea of this connecting the four kind of anchor communities of southwest colorado who for 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 the most part were experiencing an economic downturn so mm -hmm. his his idea was how can we bring some some good i guess now ecotourism to the southwest part of colorado and came up with this idea uh, to connect these towns over a series of trails. He didn't want to just do roads because there was there weren't that many. You know that that would have been impossible. But but he came. What if we could come up with an idea of connecting these with, with trails and things like that? The problem was he didn't really know the area mm -hmm. as well as he. You know he lived in Boulder, Colorado, which was you know it's four hundred miles away. Mm -hmm. So he put in an ad in Ultra Running Magazine. I mean there was no blogs, there was no internet, anything like that. And fortunately for him, he there were about four of us that answered this advertisement basically basically saying, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this run. I'm looking for some people who knew the, know the area, you know, contact me if you're interested. And that's kind of the nexus of, of hard rock. It's, it's funny because, and I'm saying this as a compliment as a European, um, in some respects, the motivation impetus to start hard rock, which is sort of the, biggest most opposite of all the european races was a very similar which is most of the european races in the alps are a tourism play are an economic play right it's the tourism right. region that comes together sure. and said how do we get heads in beds that have an event heads in beds, yeah. off off yeah. season right and so in some respect you came to the conclusion and i just talked with buzz perel about how over here in the u.s in many areas, this is a big struggle to, to get the local communities to understand right. the importance of tourism as an economic yeah. driver. And, and it, you know, right, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. no, no. I'm, I'm, I was just saying yeah. it's interesting that you, who hard rock in many ways um, stands is synonymous for the most American of all races. It's so rugged. It's so remote. It's, um, it's, it's so, you know, I mean, it feels like a wild West race, mm -hmm. right. And, and mm -hmm. at the same time, you saw that op uh, economic opportunity, right. Buzz is talking mm -hmm. about how you couldn't have a trail race like that in Boulder. Oh no, how... we, couldn't, we couldn't do, we couldn't do it. I mean, if somebody said we wanted to put together hard rock now, we, we would never be able to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's grandfathered in now. And so now, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're grandfathered in, in, yeah. in, you know, the relationships we've established with the forest service and the BLM and our, you know, our anchor communities is something that, you know, we're very fortunate, fortunate to have, but I don't know if it could be replicated. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and you bring up a good point when we, when we started it, we were at least in a large part economic, you know, an economic an idea that was part of Gordon's uh, mm -hmm. master plan but um the towns really didn't embrace it i mean they didn't you know and the original idea of hard rock was to one year start in silverton you know and have everybody come there and then the next year to start in telluride and and everybody come there and then uray and then lake city well it, we we couldn't sell the idea to any town other than silverton and and so that was that became kind of that's why Silverton and Hard Rock are now you know kind of linked together and and that's why we came up with this clockwise counterclockwise not because that was our original idea it's just because Silverton was the only town that really wanted us back in mm -hmm. you know back in 1990 when we pitched the idea to all these communities. That, I mean that's that's a super that's a super fascinating tidbit. Obviously, I didn't notice about it. So yeah, so you. You have this idea, but mm -hmm. during that time, there weren't a lot of trail races. Where do you sort of come up with, like, how do you even do this logistically? You know, I mean, for me, as somebody who started 
doing derail races five years ago, I, you know, run a few races and I figured out oh, that's how flagging is done. Mm -hmm. And that's what needs to be on an aid station. How do you even come up with that stuff? Right? Trial and error. Yeah. Oh my Trial gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing in terms of the course, you know, Gordon was smart enough to realize that he needed some help. And so mm -hmm. he, he recruited, um, I was living in Durango at the time. He recruited somebody who lived in your and grew up in your lived in, had recruited somebody who, lived and grew up in Telluride and that kind of stuff. And so they knew the trails. Mm -hmm. they, they, they knew, oh, yeah, we can get from this point to this point, you know, on this trail, some of which were systems trails, you know, Forest Ser United States Forest Service or Bureau of Land Management. Some of them were just social trails. Mm -hmm. And and that's where it gets into this idea that we probably couldn't do it now because a lot of what we did was on private property or on trails that weren't that weren't part of, of anything. So I'm sure that we pitched the idea of the with the trails that we're using now to the Forest Service or BLM, you know, that they just it wouldn't be allowed. So part of it was having the right people. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of part of it, you know, literally, like you say, those first couple of years was, you know, how do you how do you mark a course? What aid station stuff you need? Those are all just experiences that some were successful, some weren't. I remember our first year, we thought we had the course dialed in with our horse marking and so we had all these little surveyor flags that we thought were you know they, they were gonna be great that's what yeah. we were well you we come to find out that the, the wildlife in southwest colorado love to eat some of those course markings or the mm -hmm. elk would come and knock them all down or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so here we were this you know our trail now is pre our course is pretty well laid out you've got gpx and all that kind of stuff but that back when we started there was you know all those things that we were hoping would mark the course and 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 get people around some were being eaten some were being knocked over that kind of thing and so we've we've had to adjust and learn you know yeah, yeah, yeah. some of those things too the aid station stuff you know our our aid station director now just kind of just laughs at you know um brad laughs at what we started with and how it's evolved to what it is now he mm -hmm. goes, you know but yeah. there were also other things i mean there was no in the beginning there was very limited things to choose from so right, right. for that it's been good that we we do have more things you know we have more nutrient supplements we know more about what people need to have at certain parts of events and things like that we knew none of that when we first started yeah and that's the good thing when you started because the runners didn't know what they needed yeah. either right no, and so they didn't, didn't come with that level of expectation right right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. so how many permits do you need now for we hard pull... rock let's see we pull three federal permits four county permits three city permits and then a school permit so what's that okay Nine, 10 that's 10 permits that, that's not so bad that's not right. so bad if you think about yeah. it i think at time um, ask steve out that for cocodona mm -hmm. and he's cocodona. like at like 60 ish permits or something. oh yeah because he's going through all those <laughs> yeah, different yeah. municipalities and things mm -hmm. like that yeah. yeah yeah well that's amazing yeah so my role you, you go back to my role i mean my role i was kind of interested in that and then the story that i was that always gets me kind of centered on this was i was running western states in 1990 and just by sheer luck gordon hardman's wife who was crewing gordon and my father who was crewing me happened to be at the same aid station at the same time and got I to guess. talking oh you're from colorado you're from colorado oh yeah my dad you know my husband's thinking of putting on this run and my dad really kind of voluntold me to to help with hard rock he goes yeah give dale a call he'd love to help so a lot of my connection with hard rock has been because my father you know just happened to be at the right aid station at the right time with mm -hmm. the, the originator's wife yeah okay. so what you brought to the table was that you actually were a ultra runner right mm -hmm. i mean you sort of knew what the runner needed right which right. obviously is not hugely important component right right yeah. yeah yeah and then and then i suffered a uh, kind of a career-ending um I've had both my hips replaced oh. and so I could no longer run, but, but, you know, ultra runners are great people and you just want, you just want to be around them. And I just mm -hmm. want to be around them. I, I love the community. I love just getting together and that kind of stuff. So even when I couldn't run, it's like, Hmm, how can I channel this energy and channel this knowledge and all the stuff that I've come, come to love um, into an event. And, yeah. and so fortunately, again, hard rock presented 
me the opportunity to to be able to do that. Yeah, that's no, that's amazing. I mean, not the hip replacements, but the fact that you were found a way of still being in um, the in the sport and find that fulfillment. I say that after every race. I mean, after I'm you know I'm done being exhausted, or when I'm still on that high before the exhaustions really kick in, that <laughs> somehow the watching other people at the finish line is more fulfilling than finishing oh yeah oneself, there's right? nothing better yeah. there's nothing better yeah. you know there's nothing better you know in fact one of the you know we're we're known one of our one of the things that we're known for is this big kissing the rock i mean mm-hmm. and it and it is at the finish line it is and, and you're gonna have a chance to see that this year it is mm-hmm. one of the most dramatic things that i have been i've ever experienced um that was all an accident. That was because of some poor planning on my part. You know, it's like I forgot to put together a finish line. So somebody was at the start line one year and they said, hey, how do we know when we're finished? It's like, um, just touch that rock. And then, you know, went from, oh, touch that rock to, oh, now you got to kiss that rock. And then it couldn't be just a little rock. It had to be a big rock and that kind of thing. But, you know, so it's kind of that. And that's kind of evolved into what, you know, the 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 significance that this big rock has uh, that sits in our finish line now, but to stand, to, to, to stand there and watch just people's emotions and people's just everything from pure joy to, you know, pure, just literally tears and stuff Mm -hmm. like that is is so cool. It's so cool to be, to be part of and to be able to say, you know, I had a small part, I had a small part in getting, getting them to this point. Yeah. And and just to be able to share that with with so many different people, it's been it's been really a, a great part of my career. Yeah, and, and and what you're creating as a race director for these runners is such a unique sort of experience that you're giving them. Right, you're not selling them a product. People can get excited right. about oh, I bought my first iPhone or whatever. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there is there is an emotional connection when you can afford something or maybe obtain something in this way. But they they've trained so hard so long for this and they have to walk every so step years. of the way yeah. right yeah. to be able to yeah. to claim that for themselves and yet you as the race director you are the one who sort of still has to put down all the right right i mean you're so much involved in even preparing mm-hmm. that journey for them so right. it's a right. really interesting relationship that you are it is Right. It is. Right. Oh, for sure. You know, for sure. And, you know, and what, what I found you know, over the years is everybody brings a story, mm-hmm. you know, everybody has their own story, their own journey and things like that. And, um, you know, some of them are very public and they'll, they'll share them with, uh, with me sometimes, you know, like, like at our finish line, we've seen, you know, memories to, to loss to lost loved ones we've seen wedding proposals we've seen you know all sorts of things that have that have happened over the years um but everybody has their own kind of reason for for wanting to run and and what that finishing and and i'm I'm sure hard rock's not any different i mean that's just happens to be you know i'm in i'm involved at hard rock but i'm sure every event your events or or other events around the world you know it's it, it is such a it's such a cool thing to know that there are these venues and these opportunities for people to be able to experience something that has a lot of meaning to themselves. Yeah. And and we're creating such a safe environment in that regard, right? I mean, we are putting people out into nature and things happen and people have to prepare and we need to be prepared for whatever weather, whatever gets thrown at them. Right. But at the same time in our world that feels on one side, completely predictable. I drive every day to work and back, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And on the other side, right. so completely unsafe and unpredictable. Right? We're creating this environment where people right. can sort of go crazy, but they and and, and right. experience something that they would never do right. otherwise. And then at the same right. time, they, they it, there are some guardrails there, right? The course is yeah. marked. Yeah. There is an and aid, I think aid in, station, right? Yeah, any, any event has to be cognizant um, and, and aware and planning for safety things and 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 you know the what ifs of 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 what might happen you know mm-hmm. because there's so many very like you say there's so many variables there's there's objective hazards there's weather there's you know all these things that that you want people to overcome you want to put them in a position to best that they can overcome those kinds of things but you have to be smart about it as well and and be you know and and, and be 
prepared to deal with something that if it ha something happens that you're prepared because I know, you know, we're probably at the one end of the, of the spectrum. I mean, mother nature doesn't really care if your name is, you know, Dale Garland or, or, you know, or Courtney Dewalter or whatever, mother nature doesn't care. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you've got to be prepared to, you know, deal with, with anything that gets thrown at, at anybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. and especially in the mountains, right? The unpredictability yeah. of the right. mountains is right. something yeah. different than yeah. <clears throat> a course that is in the desert or something, right? It might get hot, yeah, it and, might get and, brutal, you know, but you know sort of what, what weather you're going to be. The forecasting right. is easier when well, you yeah. don't have mountains to deal with, right? Yeah, you've. I mean, uh, we, we preach this to our runners all the time. You've got to be ready for 75 degrees and a full blue sky, and you better be, better be prepared for snow because <laughs> you're going to, you know, in any given year at Hard Rock, you're going to, you're, the chances you're going to experience all of that. Yeah. You know, and, and you and you, you, you know, we talked a little bit about the remoteness and the ruggedness of the San Juans. I mean, it's they're they're one of the most beautiful mountain ranges in the world. I'm convinced. And but they're very rugged and they're very. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very American and very different from the Alps. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the Alps. Mm -hmm are arguably beautiful as well, but you literally have a, you have full cell service and you have a hut right. at every three miles and you've got helicopters standing by um, right. that can rescue you at yeah. any given time, right? It is yeah. a very different environment, right? Yeah. Ours is, ours is, I mean, the remote, you know, and some of it's, I wouldn't call it a technological desert, you know, with Starlink and things like that. You know, we've we've got pretty good safety coverage and things like that. But but part of our experience is to give people a sense of doing something without a lot of technology and, and mm -hmm. something that is pretty remote and pretty rugged and, and overcoming those those obstacles and those those challenges um, and Amazing. making you back. Yeah. So let's let's go back in time. So you you pull you put this event together. You have the first couple runs. Wait, how do you get from okay, we're doing this to whoa, this is really like exploding. <laughs> this is really turning into something, something special. Yeah. So you know, how do you sort of like arrive there? Right. Um Incrementally, I mean, there, I, I mean, if I, if I, when, when the biography and the history of Hard Rock is written, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be three or four different chapters in, in terms of this was a pivot point or this was a transformational year or whatever. Um, you know, the first year in 1992, we started, we had 42 starters and 19 finishers, and you know, and it was basically if you had a pulse, you could run. You know, mm -hmm. we, we'll sign you up the day before and that kind of thing, and. For about that first 10 years or so, um, it was pretty much, you know, we, we never filled. We, we've always had about the same number of people, mm -hmm. but we, we, you could basically walk up and, and um, you know, say, I want to run, you know. And if you didn't have a qualifier, if you just wrote a good essay saying I had this mountaineering experience or I have these these kind of credentials, if we felt that you were you were, you know, you weren't a risk to yourself or to the event, you know, you could run. Mm -hmm. um, so you hear it here first. You had to be there early, and it was easy to get into hard rock. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you just first have 10 to years. jump early on these things. Exactly. Once they become yeah. popular, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I kind of joke. The first, the first year we had a lottery was two thousand two. So that that was probably one of the years when we filled and we said, oh. What are we going to do now? We've got more people who are interested than we know what to do. In that window between 1992 and 2002, there were a couple of articles. And I remember one article by a, a gentleman who's no longer with us. His name was Jim Fisher. Again, just in print media and ultra running magazine, he said, just ran hard rock. The thing is brutal. Somebody's going to die out there. And that's when we filled. So, <laughs> The, the, the early days of the way we talked about trail running was always exactly. like, right. You're, you're going to the edge of the abyss, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. sort of dialed back at this a little bit, but yes, right, yeah, yeah. So, so I don't, I don't know, I don't know the cause, the exact cause and effect between what Jim said or what was printed in, in mm -hmm. filling. But then after about 2002, we started dealing with, you know, how do we manage manage demand and how do we manage that kind of stuff. Um, 
you know, certainly when Killian Jordan became the first the first time Killian ran, that was one of those other trend times like and that caught really more of the attention of of the Europeans mm-hmm. in in the, the worldwide ultra running world than it did really the American. How did he? How did we're, he we're hear kind of, about it? Americans are kind of slow on the uptake on this kind of stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. how how did he hear about it? I mean, it's um, he small. hadn't reached out. He just he just been you know, and and truth be known, Killian didn't get in the first two years that he ran. Mm-hmm. He applied and just you know he went through the lottery and you know he wasn't picked and and that he kind looked of thing. at his and credentials and he was like, yeah, I don't know if he's going to make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh when he when he came in and, and by then you know social media was around and 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 you know ultra running was on its way to becoming what it is um that was something that really kind of created you know mm. a buzz around hard rock and things like that that's, but I, that's... but to this day to this day he is one of the best ambassadors that hard rock has he gets hard rock he gets what we're trying to do he he doesn't try to come and change things or expect things that we can't deliver or that kind of thing he's just a a true ambassador of of all things that are good about hard rock we, yeah. we love having him he yeah. is one of the big the biggest in our sport but he treads so lightly right mm-hmm. I, he mm-hmm. is um yeah probably one of the best examples yeah one of the best ambassadors we could have for yeah. our sport because he for, didn't really for us i mean two things yeah two things stand out with with him and then we can move on to other things is we have a golden hour like a lot of events do the last year or the last hour to see the last finishers and he was not only standing there, but involved in talking with the last finishers and taking their pictures and, and cheering them on and, and that kind of thing. And I, I just remember um, one year, I think it was 2017, a, a picture of the first and the last finishers just sitting there talking and sharing a moment and sharing their experiences. And then the other one was the year we had a, a runner finish with one second to spare, Matthias, oh, one wow. second to spare. And who was there to take pictures and cheer, cheer bogey on and stuff like that? Killian. He was mm-hmm. he was there, you know, just going crazy with everybody else. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, he famously moved out of Chamonix because it was too busy, too mm-hmm. too buzzy for him, right? I mean, I think well, he and, and yet you ask him about Silverton, and that's one of the reasons he liked it, because mm-hmm. it was like I can I can walk down the street. You know, other than maybe Hard Rock Week, but I can, if I'm here two or three weeks early, I can walk down and nobody knows who I am. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So you start selling out. <clears throat> the lottery isn't the most logical decision to make, too. The other way would be trying to expand capacity. Mm-hmm. How did you end up? Was it just the permitting issue, or how did you end up saying we cannot go bigger? We have to manage what we have and find a way of yeah. sort of freeze framing right. what we have and right um it came to the realization once we started getting the kind of numbers that we've had over say the last decade or so that there was no conceivable way that we could provide an experience for thousands of people you know mm-hmm. we're, we're just the infrastructure the the lodging the restaurants the town just aren't set up for for that kind of thing our course isn't set up um you're going to see when you get here, there are certain places where you can't put more than about 10 people. And so to, to haul all the equipment and, and to get everything that would take to have a legitimate, a, a meaningful experience for runners, for 2,000 runners, just doesn't happen. So then it becomes, what, where's, what's your number? You know, what's what's a good number to have? Um, and, and that's where permitting gets gets kind of into it, into, in, comes into play, where were uh, permitted by the United States Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management for a certain number, mm-hmm. um, which they think is what a good number is for use on the resource. And so we've tried to stay with with that mm-hmm. uh, with that number, all the while trying to also grow the sport and understand that we can't just have the same people come back year after year. So our lottery has kind of evolved. You know, the the this, instead of just having one lottery, we had three. Now we have two. You know, based on how many finishes you have. Um, and then in 2022, we went to um, let's try to give the number of women who apply the same chance to get into the lottery. So we adopted the percentage, the women's percentage lottery <laughs> that we did in 2022. So 
it, it's a moving target and it's a constant discussion between myself, our board of directors, the land, the land management agencies and things like that. But, but to those people who are listening, it's like, yeah, why don't you, why don't you continue to grow? It's like, if you're, if you come to Silverton, you'll understand why we can't, we can't be, you know, UTMB or we can't be a, a, an event of 2000 people just because it just, it won't happen. So let's focus on what we are, who we are, doing our best to make it a meaningful, memorable experience for those who get in. But then let's also try to bring other people into the event um, in a variety of ways, whether it's pacing or, you know, camp hard rock activities or working as an aid in, in a volunteer, you know, something like that, you know, bringing your family along, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's a, it's a conscious decision on your part. And I want you to speak to this a little bit. Part of the reason why you have multiple lotteries is you're not fully folding over every year and getting Correct. completely new people. You want a certain right. number of people that exactly. to come back for what? What's the, what's the vision? Behind to, it? to, to educate, familiarize, carry forward the hard rock culture and the hard rock traditions and what, what it means to be a hard rock runner and what it means to be a runner in on our course and, and how important that sense of community is and how do you become part of that community? Um, if we turned everybody over every year, we, we would lose, we, I feel we would lose that. <laughs> and so that part of it, uh, that sharing of ideas and sharing of, of stories and things like that is, is just a really important part of our community and our culture. That's, um, that's one piece that I'm really looking forward to experiencing flying out in a couple of weeks, because mm -hmm. I, um, I initially didn't get that either. I, it, when I first heard about your different lotteries, it didn't really quite make sense. And I think it's probably one of the most controversial pieces oh, about sure. your event, sure. right? It feels very gatekeepy. It feels like you're, you're trying to get the same people to come back rather than we're trying to preserve something here. But everyone who's been in Silverton during the event, running or not, um, comes back and, and gets it. And so I'm yeah. really looking forward to yeah. experiencing this and say, yeah. seeing what makes your event special, especially in 2024, where we're at, right? Where there is sort of this big media explosion and mm -hmm. UTMB mm -hmm. is sort of like taking the sport into a direction where it introduces the idea of like, wow, our sport is going, we can't completely may be just offer just races for the select few, right? There are certain races that have to just allow thousands of people to run mm -hmm. because the infrastructure mm -hmm. allows it and the interest mm -hmm. is there in the sport, right? Yeah. So let's right. let's make it happen, right? But to see an experience um, on a sort of on a flip side, I'm I'm really excited about it. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. Looking forward to and, seeing it. And you know, we're kind of in a, in, in, it's kind of a, it's interesting you bring that up, Matthias, because there is a, we're kind of in a transition where some of those people that are so synonymous with hard rock, um, Kirk App, Blake Wood, Betsy Nye, Betsy Kallmeyer, these people who've been around for decades and, and are the keeper of the stories, well, they're starting to retire. They're starting to have other parts of their life. And so who's that next group of people that are hard rock? They get it. They know what they are. They've been around a long time. Who are those people and we're identifying those people and, and how do we get them involved to make sure that what Blake and Betsy and the Betsy's and, and Kirk, you know, kind of inculcated when they started that that gets passed on to this next group of people. And, and fortunately we do have a whole group of people. In fact, starting today, um, we have, we have a community, we have horse orientation hikes led by a 16 time finisher, Chris Twiggs, mm -hmm. um, whose very purpose was, we're going to take people out. We're going to show them the course, but we're also, we're not going to run it. We're going to hike it. We're not going to mark it. We're just going to go and hike it so people can see it and share stories and share experiences and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, each part. And he'll be doing that for the next week and a half That's with, amazing. That's you know, amazing. with new runners and veterans. Yeah. Yeah. No, that That's amazing. So, you you mentioned about how sort of bring, have, having Killian come over sort of exploded all of this by now. And um, Chris Thornley was just talking about it at Western States, how part of what he's trying to do is 
not just let the lottery be the lottery, but also very specifically trying to get people into the race to give them experience from other parts of the world or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, how do you sort of see, how do you make do this, this makeup of saying, okay, the lottery is mathematical chance. How do we get sort right. of the right people? Because right. at the same time, you do want also high level of competition right mm -hmm. i mean you mm -hmm. want i mean you are priding yourself as hard rock um there are lots of races that are hard and difficult and remote right you pride right. yourself for bringing sort of excellence in competition mm -hmm. athletic competition to the sport mm -hmm. as well speak to that a little bit how you yeah. focus on that well yeah bringing bringing you know francois Dan or zach miller or Courtney Dewalter or Katharina Hartmuth this year or whatever, uh, Tara Dower, you know, um, Camille Bruya. I mean, that does give Hard Rock a little bit of cachet, a mm -hmm. little bit, you know, a little bit of thing. Um, but that's never, never been our goal is to 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 make it a race of the elites. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's and and we 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 love them we we love having them there we think it's it, it it's good for our not only for our event it's good for our partners it's good for the sport that kind of thing but we do kind of stop short of making it a, a big deal in terms of you know that they're here to 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 compete now we know anytime you put two people on the starting line together even if you say it's not going to be a competition there's going to be competition you know mm -hmm. it's, it's going to mm -hmm. be competition so so we'll let them we'll let them sort that out, you know. Um, but we will also celebrate the person who comes in with five minutes to spare. Mm -hmm. So to 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 address your question, like, well, how do we how do we do how do we get other people involved and how do we reach out to other groups? Uh, for us, a lot of it is um, because we have such a limited number. We have to kind of be, um, I guess be evaluative i guess maybe the word about our, our qualifiers okay um, yep. we we want we want qualifiers we want people we don't we don't want somebody from australia having to travel to to utah to qualify so mm -hmm. over the last 10 years we've tried to very very uh, strategically to make sure that there are qualifiers all around the world we have 33 qualifiers now on basically every continent except Af except antarctica mm -hmm. and, and so giving people as the sport evolves and the sport grows, we want to have people who can at least stand, stand, uh, have an opportunity to qualify. So at least they can be in the lottery. Mm. Um, it's a double-edged sword because the, as, as you get more qualifiers, then more people finish, then you have more applicants, which leads to lottery fatigue and, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So we have to be very, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a double-edged sword, you know, it's, it's a fine fine line to walk, you know, in terms of the number of qualifiers and that kind of stuff. And that that like our overall number is a discussion every year. Okay, what what events are, especially what events are are coming online? What events are good qualifiers? Which which events now worldwide prepare runners the best for hard rock? You know, to 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 finish hard rock and that kind of stuff. And yeah. so it's yeah, it's not easy. It's it's not it's yeah. a quality problem, but it's not easy. So you you are a non-profit and you your focus is to what's the what's the actual mission of the non-profit mm -hmm. all right it's to provide an opportunity for th basically we've identified three philanthropic categories pillars whatever you want whatever mm -hmm. you want to talk about um the first is education um and you know, and so towards that, we we're a very active member in the Joel Zucker Scholarship. We've given over three hundred thousand dollars to local youth and stuff like uh, you know to continue their education, whether it's college education, trade school, whatever. Um, the second is uh, right now it's gender equity, um, mm -hmm. and so we you know we sponsor Women's Running Week. We 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 help trail you know different groups that are involved with with um, with furthering the sport in in especially with women and then the third is trail use and trail etiquette mm -hmm. um we give away money to groups who are helping educate and protect trails and, and educate people about proper trail use and and that kind of thing so looking looking working with people like 
San Juan Mounds Association or Uray Trails Group or Durango Trails, um, either providing them with with grant funding or providing them with, um, you know, money so they can use for an ambassador program or something like that. Or, you know, this year, like San Juan Mounds Association wanted to be part of Camp Hard Rock and, and do a session in Camp Hard Rock. And so we say, sure, you know, that makes perfect sense to have one of our partners line up with that. Yeah. So if you have as a nonprofit, a focus that isn't actually the race, right? Where the race is just mm -hmm. a means, it's a means to an end. Yeah. It's a means to an end in a sense, right? You then also very strategically have to make sure that your race is set up in a way that it can further these goals. And I think that's where right. the media then comes in in an interesting way, right? Because one option would be is to just charge $2,000 for an entry, right. Right? right? And you just say, okay, well, and a thousand always goes to these nonprofits. Mm -hmm. right? And given mm -hmm. how well known and beloved hard rock is at two thousand dollars you probably still would be selling it probably right? we would probably still yeah and, and we and, you know in 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 conversations we we in fact i i just did a or, or i'm finishing up a, a, an evaluation of our entry fee relative to what our other qual our qualifiers are charging and that kind of stuff um it is something that when we enter in a, into an agree a partnership agreement with a corporate partner we talk about our philanthropy and our goals mm -hmm. for that, um, which tends to resonate a lot mm -hmm. with, with a lot of our partners, you know, for example, a, sh a shout out, I'll give a shout out to the North face who is very involved with our women's running weekend and, and, you know, that kind of thing. And so they're able to kind of jump on according to their corporate kind of corporate mission and corporate objectives. You know, we, we partner a lot with that. So, yeah, it would be. Uh, you're right. I mean, we could probably charge double what we're charging, and 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 you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not. But... I'm not suggesting yeah. that you should in no. any way. Right? No, no, no. I I really am not. Um, I'm yeah. just. What is I'm this just... that Hard Rock just raised their? their I know, right? Like, you heard it here first. Well, it's all because of Matthias. <laughs> the ne the next price increase that I get the hate mail. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying this, right? I am. You know, executive director of the Trail Running Film Festival. I understand how you sort of have to operate. And I, what I'm really hearing what you're saying is that's where some of your strategic thinking comes in a little bit, right? Because if mm -hmm. you bring the right people together and mm -hmm. if you bring big athletes, then the sponsors are interested and the media is right. interested, right? And so that's where the- And then it generates the, revenue, which then I can it, turn around and give to- ex yeah. ex Exactly, right? Yeah. There is- Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all tied together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all tied together. Yeah. It, it's, it's, and it's, again- it's, Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. I, you, yeah. you. It's all tied together. It's yeah. all, you know, it's all part of a, of a, you can't just isolate one part and say, we're yeah. only going to deal with this because it has a ripple effect across everything else. So who you get, um, who you get there, what you believe in, what your philanthropy is, you know, all those things are all kind of tied together and, and one decision can, as I said, ripple across many things. And, and so, um, and again, for, we are very fortunate, you know, uh, in, in that we can we can do that and, and have those kind of discussions and have those options and things like that. My greatest fear is that we will um, squander that opportunity to have Hard Rock cr contribute to the greater good um, using our position that we will just squander that opportunity and just say, yeah, thanks, we we're Hard Rock. We didn't do anything for the greater good or for the greater ultra running community or stuff like that. That 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 would make me very, very, very sad. Yeah. I mean, I, you say that's your greatest fear. I, luckily, maybe, I feel like our sport is so far away from this. Like, I, I feel hope. like if ESPN and the Olympic Games would sort of come knocking at your door or other races, which, you know, and say, okay, we want races to be in a certain format and mm -hmm. so we can cover them and then runners start expecting this format. I, I think that there is sort of a journey where you all of a sudden find yourself in a place right. where yeah. you are. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Where where you almost 
as a race director, you find yourself almost providing just a pitch for a sporting event, right? Yeah. Where, yeah. And somebody else brings the teams and you're just there mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. right, sell some concessions, mm -hmm. right? But we are right. so far away from this in our I sport. I hope so. Right? Yeah. I mean, least, I... At least for, you know, and one of the first things we did, and I never really understood it till till we got to the point where we were where we are now is when I was a baby baby director, I was all about the aid stations and oh, wouldn't it be cool if I could get somebody to, to you know, Nike would come in and sponsor. And mm -hmm. we fortunately had a, a gentleman who said, before you do any of that, you better figure out who you are and, and what you stand for and what are your values. And we went through at the time, I thought kind of a, just a academic exercise about who we are, what we believe, who, you know, how do we treat runners? How do we treat our sponsors? How do we treat the environment? How do we treat the communities? Um, But now those are the things, every decision that I make, I balance against those, those values. And I try to stay true to those values and, and make sure that those values are still relevant. I mean, you know, a giant Nike banger, banner at Kroger's canteen or something like that <laughs> would be interesting to see, right? Turn it into a little Nike town up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but but I also know, you know, there's a different set of expectations. The expectations of a hard rock runner in 2024 is much like we've talked about, much, much different than the expectations were of, of a hard rock runner 20 years ago or 30 years ago or whatever. And so there's that that's there's that fine balance between, you know, wanting to stay true to what got you there and, and remaining relevant. Yeah. And so that's that's where I spend a lot of my mental energy. No, that's fantastic. So now. We've talked a lot about the race and you've hinted at Camp Hard Rock and the atmosphere mm -hmm. in Silverton. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I've learned this trying to figure out how I even get to this place uh, logistically. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not it's easy. Not easy. It's I was not like, easy. okay, one yeah. flight into and then the drive is how long? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like okay. the one flight out of Casablanca or something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah, especially especially as a European. I mentioned on the last podcast, and I mentioned on the last podcast too that I don't even know if Katarina wanted me to say this, but she contacted me and she's like, I, I live in Zurich. I don't drive. How do I get up to Silverton? Right? <laughs> it's yeah, like... she, she's she's emailed me a couple of times too. Like, yeah. how do I do this? Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. So it, yeah. It, it's very hard. But leaving that aside, people can figure this out. Expedia exists. Um, yeah. People come. <laughs> yeah. People come to Silverton not just uh -huh. for a dip in and out for the race and go back home because it is so remote. You have the benefit of keeping people there for a while. So now you're building something that is not just the event, right? That is, or sure. not just a race that is this, mm -hmm. this larger event. And that is ultimately fits perfectly into your mission and mm -hmm. of economic development for this town. So speak a little bit about Silverton as a place and what makes it special and how you then build Camp Hard Rock around this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for your listeners who aren't familiar, um, the biggest, the biggest community that we, we are involved with as a community, I think Telluride is maybe 7,000 people, 6,000 mm -hmm. people. Silverton is a town of 700. And, and so it, they're very small, remote towns and, and they're all at, at, at high elevation, you know, Silverton sits at 9,000 feet and, and, you know, and um, Telluride's at 8,500, you know, the low one is Ure at 7,600 feet or something. I, I can't remember exactly what they are. So what we found over years, over a couple of, well, started about 10 years ago where people were coming and spending weeks there to acclimate mm. and they were there for our event, but they may have been there for like two weeks and they brought their family and, and, um, but there was nothing for them to do. You know, it's a small community and, and that kind of thing. And so we, we started and it's evolved um, to the point where it is now, um, this notion of what can we do to, A, um, provide, provide activities that are low cost or no cost for, for runners, their families, volunteers, you know, our entire community. What can we do to further our mission in terms of philanthropy and education and that kind of stuff? Um, how can we make sure that people are the most prepared they can be for 
for hard rock in terms of knowing the course and, and that kind of stuff. And how can we get them to talk to each other other than on the, on the start line or at the finish awards. Mm -hmm. And so out of that evolved this thing called camp hard rock. And, and it's grown to this thing this year, we have over 34 events, I think Amazing. over the week. Mm -hmm. um, one of which is the trail running film festival. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yes. Um, but it, it, it's all centered around this idea of getting people to to go to educational things or social things or, you know, whatever, to spend time together to get to know each other mm -hmm. and, and to be part of a community and that kind of thing. And so we do everything from kids events to educational things to uh, partner activations to, as I said, San Juan Mountains Association, Mount Studies Institute, do like nature hikes and trail etiquette, you know. So it's just it's just a fun time. In fact, it's so funny. We in 2019 we had to cancel because of snow, but we canceled late enough that a bunch of people just showed up in Silverton. So we had a camp hard rock without an event. And people in 2019 walked away going, "Well, maybe we got to do this like every five years, you know? Like it was no so much fun to do camp hard rock and not have a run, you know? <laughs> because we were doing badass runs and you know group runs and getting together in the bars at night and that's going to make the lottery even like harder. Don't give in <laughs> to that notion. People are going <laughs> to hang you on yeah. the town square. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. So they said every five years, we could probably do this like every five years. We'll just show up and have a, have a, you know, have, have a camp hard rock without a run because sometimes people go, Oh, now I got to go run. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, so it's been it's been kind of fun to watch that evolve and and people take ownership of it. You know, this year I had, gosh, four or five people say, "Hey, I'd love to do this event for Camp Hard Rock. Can I come and do something, or can I put on this event and that kind of thing?" So it's it's now gone from something where I've tried to create events to something where people just have kind of embodied. And and so we've got trivia night, we've got social hours, we've got coffee clubs, we've got you know, women's panel, we've got, uh, uh, for, we've got um, a mining legacy, we've got our Native American um, recognition, we've got all sorts of different things going on in Camp Hard Rock. And it's really fun. I mean, I'm super looking forward to this, because I'm a huge lover of the culture even more so than the run so i would be somebody who would be like why are we even running right this is this is fun like that so i'm very much looking forward to it. but hasn't anybody and obviously that's a dumb question of course somebody has asked why not offer another race distance then during that week that way you could get more runners to run right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um two things to that first is um, we have, because of where we're at and that kind of thing, we stress the, there's a lot going on in Silverton, Telluride, Urea. I mean, this is prime time, prime season for, for these mountain communities as tourist economies. Mm -hmm. And so getting the towns to embrace another event, um, you know, providing volunteers, um, that kind of thing, putting it into the calendar, the schedule of, of three communities. Um, it's pretty tough, mm -hmm. you know, to, to do what we think needs to be done. Now, that being said, um, we have a great working relationship with, with Jamil Curry and Eric Vipa, mm -hmm. and he puts on a couple of events in Silverton. So we've chosen not necessarily to brand another event as hard rock, mm -hmm. a hard rock branding thing, but also making, making it known that you don't want to run hard rock, but you want to come to Silverton. Well, then you can run Kendall Mountain that Era Viper puts on the mm -hmm. week before, mm -hmm. or the the Silverton Alpine Marathon that Era Viper puts on the week before, or um, the Blue Ribbon 10K that the town puts on um, on the Fourth of July, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's other things that just not totally connected to hard rock itself, but we're kind of the a, a reason for people to to come to the San Juans. Yeah, you know. Your race has your race, you know, on the 4th mm -hmm. of July. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's other events that we either co-brand or help promote or, you know, say, Hey, if you're in the area, try this one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is, this is a good way. You don't have to own everything, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. if there is an, especially in a place where there is enough activity already. So mm -hmm. would you, I mean, you, you talked about it that you would never get the permits, but in 
some respects the original mission of and being an economic driver wouldn't be necessary anymore nowadays question mark right Right? well i mean our average hard rock runner brings about four people to hard rock we have we we have uh an economic impact on on the town that we think is 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 pretty significant for the size of event we are um without um, causing a lot of st stress or tension on the community infrastructure, the the, the code enforcement, the law enforcement, um, that kind of thing. So, again, it, it's kind of you have to kind of do a measured kind of thing of what's your end goal and what's what's the cost to to do what's you know what's the the cost to the community that that happens. Um, yeah. But we have seen you know people you know I can think of four or five people that have come to Silverton because of Hard Rock and said this is my new home and have literally moved to Silverton oh, wow. uh, because of hard rock. Yeah. 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 No, that's so, amazing. so it's, I guess it kind of depends on how you measure economic activity, but you also want to make sure that you're bringing the right kind. Now it's almost like you want to make sure that you bring the right kind of ac of economic benefit to the communities um, that you don't end up causing some, some hard feelings with the, with the locals. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about how, winter sport in the very early Olympic games sort of affected the first Alpine towns mm -hmm. and how that mm -hmm. completely like changed the way people thought about their uh, livelihoods in, in these right. communities and stuff. Right. And in yeah. some respects, there's some similarities there, but you mm -hmm. don't oh, have, yeah. right. You don't, yeah. you don't necessarily yeah. have that farming culture, right. I mean, you come from right. a mining culture and stuff like that. So yeah. it, it, it's yeah. a little bit different, um, but there are definitely, but you know, it, it's interesting. You should bring up the skiing thing because Jamil and I just had, Oh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, there's a, a, a really extreme skiing uh, area called Silverton mountain. And we met with, and it was just bought by a, a couple of guys who are very interested in, partnering and what can we do to bring this this ecotourism this adventure based to tourism and that kind of stuff to Silverton year round because when you get to Silverton you're going to see I mean and it there's it's part of it's the charm but you still have to run a community you still have to have resources to run a community mm -hmm. and so we we met with them it's like okay so how can we partner you the the owners of this ski area with us these 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 event managers of summertime things, are there some things that we can maybe jointly do together and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're in those discussions as well. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing place to be in where, again, I talked with Buzz about nimbyism in Boulder, right? Where you sort of have, you've built up the reputation. So you are a good mm -hmm. citizen of the community. At the same time, you're also bringing people in that, Makes some people stand in line longer for coffee during Camp Hard Rock right. Week, right? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and there will always be somebody who will put their yeah. nose up in the air, <laughs> right? But then there's a part, of, you know. The, the, then what we try to do with that is we try to make sure that the owner of the coffee shop knows that hey, this is what this is this is the money that we're bringing. You know, this is mm. this is how we're helping you you know, benefit your business and, and that kind of thing. So and it's in the calendar so they can plan and prepare for it, right? Exactly. And yeah. and we're getting like Camp Hard Rock, a lot of those things are at local businesses, you know, like mm -hmm. the Coffee Bear sponsors one of our coffee clubs, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of thing. And they become gathering spots, not only for the week of Hard Rock, but when people come back to Silverton, you know, three or four or five months later, they go, oh yeah, that's where I had coffee or oh yeah, that's where I had dinner and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do both, you know, week of and, and immediate around Harder Rock, but then also the long-term relationships and that kind of thing. And luckily for the local community, you're a million miles away from this, the way the Olympic Games are, where the local businesses literally clean yeah. out their, their um, products for six weeks and let like yeah. the big corporate store take over, right? And all of a sudden you have like right. in a weird random place, it usually is a little like knickknack store. All of a sudden you have like yeah. some corporate yeah. store selling high end luxury goods because it's still yeah. games. That's yeah. not happening in Silverton yeah. is what you're telling me. It's not me. happening in Silverton. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, amazing. So 
<laughs> I'm, I'm to be quite honest, I'm terrified of the altitude. I am not doing well in the altitude, so I, I'm, I will be very conscientious of where I am. But I'm immensely looking forward to um, checking out your incredible um, place in this this world that that you live and you call home and you create. Yeah. Well, we're 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 real excited, and, and kudos to you, and thanks to you for all the work you do with the with the film series and things like that. And again, and I don't know if your listeners even know, or or we haven't really even we should we should the talk subject. we the, should talk about it the, absolutely. The, the you know the 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 world premiere of of Courtney Dewalter's summer last year is going to be the Trail Run Film Festival in Ure this year. Yes, um, and so that 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 was cool. And thank you so much for for allowing that to happen and including that in the you know, in our, you know, our presentation of, of your film series. Yeah. It's, it's a super exciting opportunity. And as the film festival is sort of evolves, we're trying to find ways of letting local hosts sort of add a local flair to it. We're not just saying this has to be that exact box, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously we've got global sponsors. We have some expectations around, right? Yeah. But we usually let local sort of, shows something local and this is sort of right. pushing the boundaries a little bit because it's not just somebody who does a little five minute presentation of their you know favorite trail race or whatever right, right? this is right. a world premiere right. of a solomon film of courtney's right. incredible year so it's going to be super yeah. cool to have the filmmakers there to be right there. Yeah, and having them being able to answer questions and things yes. like that I'm, I'm really looking for i'm really looking forward forward to to hard rock being able to be part of that and and to to have you there and and have you know all all the the people from a team you know from her film from her team there to, yeah. to kind of help and then uh, in addition to having you seen his film there a film on you seen and his adventure Absol last year absolutely i mean that's last year his hard rock adventure last year have you seen the film yet mm -mm. Mm -mm. no i want to see I, I purposely have not watched any of them okay, because i want to be impressed no it, it's really good because i've seen the entire reel now many times yeah <laughs> and so yeah. by me for me it's 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 awesome to see the people's reaction but i myself i have a hard time um after having watched it now a dozen times but yeah the scenes film is really cool because i think um not, not his, his story is incredible right but he also bringing it back to hard rock i think he's he, he's showing some really cool angles of uh, the it. hard rock course too mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. i feel like i haven't seen right and right. um i think that's that's a really cool piece for people who yeah. um want to get to know um uh, hard rock and, and not just the typical photos that we've seen yeah. um, Stephen yeah. Mortensen the filmmaker um he's paced him on the last like what 30 right. miles or so right and right. so uh -huh. I think he's got some shots of the hard rock course that were unique yeah. in fact um a friend of mine and local Michael Martian got picked in the hard rock lottery with like one mm -hmm. or two mm -hmm. tickets mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that yeah yeah. And he came to the film festival here in Olympia, my hometown. We always have one of the first showings. And mm -hmm. he came and I told him, it's like, uh, you better come and watch this because there's going to be a film about hard rock. And I came to, up to him afterwards yeah. and like, okay, are you freaked out or are you inspired? <laughs> <laughs> And, and either answer was going to be okay. Yeah. And it, essentially yeah. it's going to be a mixture of both, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> But but to, again, to, in that whole kind of the whole Killian Courtney conversation, you've seen as another guy who I just am just just he just gets it. You know, mm -hmm. he gets what it means to come here. He he came here. He had he loved the not only the 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 actual run, but also the whole experience. And and you know, yeah. so I'm yeah. hoping I'm hoping that kind of comes through too. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I think. Um... I think it's a fantastic film. And then to have basically back to back because his film is the last film, back to back um, films that touch on hard rock, I think will be incredible way of early. The film festival is going to be on Tuesday, sort of kick off the, I mean, not kicking off the week, but we're still a few days mm -hmm. away. Right. Yeah. I think it's right. Uh, no, it's, it's kind of one of the marquee events, you mm -hmm. know, it's one of our, our big marquee events this year. So, 
So we're just excited to have you there. And don't worry about the elevation, buddy. We will make sure. Just bring your water bottle. That's all <laughs> I, I can say. I thought you said bring your oxygen tank. Your water bottle and your sunscreen. Oh, that's okay. it. I'll, I'll, okay. make, I'll make sure that I'll be prepared. Uh, Dale, I am super excited. This was an incredible conversation. I mean, in some respects, I don't know if it was very helpful to the audience. It was very self-serving because now I feel very much prepared <laughs> to come out there and experience it. But I do know that Hard Rock is such a unique event around the world. It is such a unique race that isn't measured in sheer numbers. And it because it's inaccessible in many ways, um, it, it punches above its weight in a sense of how many people actually get to run and experience it. There's 800, there's 800, 800 and some now people worldwide that can say, I have kissed that rock. And this is such a tiny number if you think about yeah. it, right? I mean, that's like what a third of UTMB runners every yeah. year, right? I mean, it's right. Just, and yet everyone knows hard rock. I mean, Europeans right. love hard rock. Everyone mm -hmm. that I'm interviewing um, from Germany, they say hard rock in Western states, and often hard rock being the one that is the yeah. number one race that. Yeah. Yes, it's probably desirable because it's hard to get into, but also because it, it just to them, it represents such a unique piece of right. what they perceive to be American trail running. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, you've created something absolutely phenomenal and I'm glad it's in your hands. And yeah. Um, so, you know, and again, it's kudos to me and or not, not kudos, kudos <laughs> not only yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm fortunate to be the leader of a very well-tuned, well-intentioned, well-organized band of people that um, it's just my pleasure to to be part of. And, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is a, large, a much bigger group. I'm giving you yeah. the kudos right now because I'm looking at you on, sure. on yeah. Zoom here, right? You're right. representing, obviously, a right. team of yeah. incredible, dedicated, and yeah. people who love this yeah. event and shepherd yeah. this. And so it's, um, yeah. and I'm excited. You don't have to, but you don't have to wear a number to be part of the hard rock community. That's, yeah. that's kind of our, that's kind of our mantra, you know, that, yeah. and, and our, our finish line coordinator came up with that. And I go, that, that, that's what it means, you know? Yeah. So we welcome, we welcome people wherever they're at, you know, and, yeah. and we welcome yeah. the world. Fantastic. Except that you can't find a place to stay. That's the hard part. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Come, but book early. <laughs> well, you found where you found a place where it, it uh, Cascade, right? Um, no, not Cascade. What's that hotel called? Um, no, I forget. Oh, you found some place in Silverton, or no? Yeah, no, right. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silverton. No, Silverton. I found a place in a in in that hotel that is looks very swanky, but has these bunk oh, the rooms. Wyman. Yes, exactly. The Wyman. The Wyman? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, they, they have yeah. these bunk rooms. And I was mm -hmm. like, I know that's going to be not the, the most ideal because I don't have any privacy in a sense. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, I'll be right in the action. And I really There you go. Want, You're right, down. You're right, yeah. in, right in the middle of it. And yeah. I think that was more important for me um, than having to constantly drive around. And quite frankly... If I would have stayed in Ure, um at that point, Ure would have just been super expensive. There was nothing right. in Ure that right. made it worthwhile to say, let me just stay far, far away. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm excited mm -hmm. to be there and I don't know, wake up in the middle of the night and finish finish or something. There you go. Or something. There you go. Well, super yeah. Dale. Thank you so much. I don't so I've, really... I've enjoyed this so much. I'm so glad that we, we had a chance to communicate. Yeah, fantastic. To... Especially because Before... by the time I arrive next week, you're going to be busy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably just see you. <laughs> I'll wave. We'll just <laughs> wave in passing. Yeah. Exactly. We'll the, the, the race director's wave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And all, all, all other race directors know that feeling. Like, Love to talk to you, but not right now. Yeah, 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 exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, super. I don't really, do I need to link to any personal accounts or just the official hard rock is your oh, voice? Yeah. Is, just is, follow, yeah. follow what we're, we're doing, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. It's, it's been fun. I love it. Thank you, Dale, for coming on Single Track and for kicking off our hard rock coverage See you in Silverton. And thank you, dear listeners, 
for joining us and for all the support throughout the years. More links and info in the show notes at singletrack.fm. This was Single Track, and I see you over at Electric Cable Car for Daily Trailer Mountain News and our very special Hard Rock 100 coverage. I'm your host, Matthias Eichler, saying auf Wiedersehen und tschüss. Thank you.